All right, so I'm, I'm not here to play a John Prine song. Don't get mad at me. But I have a good reason. I'm here to tell a little bit of a story. And uh, this is a story that I really haven't told many people outside of Fiona and just very close friends, uh, mostly because it sounds batshit fucking crazy. <laughs> Sorry for cursing in the rhyme end, can't help it. Um, we all love John, and I, had a, I did have a really dear connection with him. Um, there was a mutual respect there. Um, so, you know, it was a few weeks after he passed, and I was down in Louisiana on this very old plot of land, this really historic place. I was with some girlfriends, and um, I was not doing really well. I was not in a good, a good headspace. Not only did I just lose a friend and a hero, but I was going through a divorce freshly, and I was really sad. And um, this is where it gets crazy. <laughs> um, one night when I was down there, I, uh, I don't know how else to explain it. This is not something I was looking for. John, his spirit, came to me. He contacted me. And again, it, it really came out of the blue. Of course, like, I love John just as much as anybody and loved our connection, but like, trying to get in touch with John Prine's spirit just sounds like something a corny American artist would tell Rolling Stone. So I wasn't looking for that, okay? But it, it came to me. Um, I have witnesses there um, that saw this, that know this, my closest girlfriends, my sister. Um, it was, I can only really describe it as in like a, a dreamlike kind of state. I had this very cerebral, very real conversation with him. And um, it started off with him giving me a message. And <laughs> I almost want to cry talking about it because it came at a time when I really needed to hear it. But he said, walk in peace. Just walk in peace. And that's not even a phrase I'd ever heard before, you know. And uh, what, what continued was, again, just very real, visceral conversation. Um, there were messages for Fiona. Um, I called her in the middle of the night with this, you, you'll never believe what happened. Um, and uh, I've always kind of been into witchy stuff, but nothing like this has ever happened in my life, ever. So anyway, long story short, the next day, I was leaving New Orleans and I was on a plane back to Nashville and I was by myself and I was like sitting, I was sitting in my seat and I was looking out the window and I can only just describe the most biblical, beautiful sunset I've ever seen in my life. It was stunning. And I was kind of thinking about, you know, the, the experience that I'd had the night before and I kind of started dozing off on the plane and um, this walk in peace tapped on my shoulder and it flooded me in a way that I, so I don't really write a lot of songs by myself. I love collaboration. This thing hit me like a lightning bolt. I mean, it was, I was kind of half awake, half asleep, but it, it came in the form of like lines that made sense. It, they rhymed. I heard the chords. They sounded like, hymn, like a hymn. Um, I don't really write music that sounds like that. And I truly believe in my soul that I, in some weird way, as crazy as it sounds, I was a vessel, um, maybe a vessel for some comfort, a message for Fiona or whatever. And it's funny because, you know, one time John and I actually tried to sit down and write a song in his house one day. This is early on. And I was like, oh my God, my hero, like we're going to write a song. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be a hit. Yeah, right. Okay. Like we just sat and talked. A song didn't come out that day, but he imparted a bunch of stories, a bunch of humor and stuff. So in, in whatever way possible, whatever's out there that we can't explain, I got my John Prine song and I wanted to share it with you guys today. It's called Walk in Peace. <laughs> Also, this is unreleased. No one's ever heard it till right now. So, anyway. 